short story. This is so huge, so gigantic and overwhelming, not just in terms of size, of course we all know it's, it's a long uh, novel in quite a few volumes, but in terms of um, importance, in terms of uh, reference point, in terms of significance. So it is so among us that uh, many notes would be needed. I'm not sure how this will happen in my particular case, um, because I'm, I don't know if and when I will uh, take this again. Uh, uh, I mean, read this again. Um, first of all, it's the size of it. Of course, it takes a long time to read it. But then, it's also a disillusion with uh, Tolstoy the man. I've read about it in the meantime, and that will surely affect my enjoyment of his uh, uh, masterpiece. Let me uh, refer to a few aspects that are, um, let's say, peculiar. Um, <laughs> instead of going to the literary criticism, which is anyway not my field. Uh, first of all, I will refer to the joke from Seinfeld uh, that it was not supposed to be called War and Peace, but uh, War, what is it good for? <laughs> Elaine says that in a car with an editor and a Russian writer. And uh, <laughs> she says that someone else uh, convinced him to change the name. That's not that, it's just a joke. But there is a, an extraordinary book called War, What Is It Good For? by Ian Morris. Fabulous, fantastic. Uh, history, and indeed so many proofs that wars have been good for many things, but that's another story. Uh, then I'll refer to the fact that I have been uh, reading uh, Sort of philosophy by Bertrand Russell, and in it, uh, Russell refers at one point that, that, uh, to the to the Romantics, Byron, who has a line that goes on to Nietzsche, and then we arrive at uh, Hitler somehow in terms of thinking, and uh, Napoleon again a figure which dominated the 19th century and. He was so much loved and praised by the Romantics. And Tolstoy tried with War and Peace to exercise this uh, demon uh, without much success in that term, I think is the conclusion of Russell. Not speaking of the literary, cultural, artistic value of the book, but just about the figure of Napoleon inside, because we, also, we indeed have uh, Napoleon, uh, who is uh, one of the towering uh, characters in uh, War and Peace, which has everything. That's why it's also uh, very hard to uh, talk about it. War and Peace, love, hate. Relations change, uh, beauty and ugliness. There's Helen, uh, the wife of uh, Piotr Berezovsky, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's a funny idea to uh, speak a little about this book. Uh, five years or more since I last uh, read it, but it's a challenge, and then it's not, um, it's part of the point to try and see what impact and what impression is on me uh, after reading the book. And so far, 
most of the books I uh, note on <laughs> been read the very day, that very day. Uh, especially since uh, there's this um, uh, ritual of trying to finish not really a book a day, it's not uh, possible unless, and that's one of the solutions, I concentrate on plays and I do that, and then on short stories, uh, and uh, adapt it for the radio novels or narratives, like today uh, there was the uh, island of Dr. Moro, and I think. So, fabulous, fantastic world piece, which may have some few more, a few more notes uh, soon.